Good afternoon and welcome to Moments with Melinda. I am your host, Melinda Moulton. And today I am speaking with Kathleen Kolb. She is an artist and educator and a renowned, internationally renowned uh, painter. So Kathleen, thank you so much for being with me today. Well, thank you, Melinda. I'm, that's, I'm, that's a little over the top in terms of praise. I'm, I might be renowned in uh, certain counties of Vermont, but um, anyway, I have had an impact and as have you, and it's a delight to get to speak with you. Well, thank you so much. Um, I, you, I know it's amazing because when I interview artists, they're always so understated about their work and about who they are. There's a, there's a level of humility and humbleness that artists have that I, that I really honor. But you truly, and we're going to get into this story for my viewers, are really about how how uh, uh, how how well known your work is. So let's start at the beginning. Can you tell me a little bit about your childhood? Uh, let's see. I was a child. I was a child in Cleveland. I was the eldest of five, and then what? By the, when I was twenty, my parents had a sixth, who is wonderful and lives here in Vermont. Uh, my my youngest sister. Um, my I had great good fortune of living near the Cleveland Museum of Art and the Cleveland Institute of Art, which is a, a regular art school, and enjoyed the luxury, really. And I don't know how my parents put it together, but they did, of spending Saturday mornings either in classes at the museum or in classes at the Institute. So I had a lot of um, exposure early and was certain of what I was gonna do early. Um, my high school art teacher was wonderful. So I went from, I knew I was gonna go to art school and my parents and all of us, the six, seven of us at that time moved to New Jersey, my senior year of high school. And that sort of set the stage for going um, on further in my education. At what age did your parents recognize that you were, uh, that you that you had a gift in art? I think teachers started telling them I was a little different when I was five. Well, and that was kindergarten, right? That was the first school exposure. The first time somebody outside the family had a chance to sort of assess. I think the story was that the teacher, the kindergarten teacher told the class to draw a picture of spring and everybody drew pictures of tulips and daffodils, except me, I drew a bear coming out of a cave. So. <laughs> It was just a, a slightly different take on the world and, and it alerted the teacher. Do you still have that drawing? No, all of those. I mean, with set six kids, did my, and many <laughs> moves, my mother didn't save. Your parents had, well, I have, you know, I'm surprised it's not stuck on their refrigerator, but um, it's, uh, you come from a family of six children. Yes. Yes. And where do you land in that family? I'm the eldest. You're the oldest. I'm the I'm the responsible one, that, sort of. I'm the trail trailblazer and the responsible one. Wow. Well, that that's that explains quite a bit. So, so you talked about your art art teacher, but who else in your life, or maybe it was your art teacher, who was your inspiration to pursue art? Let's see. Uh, well, art teachers were great. Um, but I just I just knew what I wanted to do. I loved making images. I loved creating illusions. I wanted things to be real. I can remember really studying Andrew Wyeth paintings by the time I was 15 and 16. Um, my, I can remember, I spent a lot of time in the museum. So a lot of the inspiration came from dead artists, long dead artists. I mean, I loved the antiquities too, the Egyptian things and um, the Jottos and the Della Robias. I mean, it was all over the map. The Cleveland Museum is an extraordinary collection, you know, well, much renowned. So um, I had that and didn't really realize, you know, I can remember playing hide and seek among the sarcophagi with my pals who were, you know, also being picked up by mothers and we were waiting. It was, it was a place of comfort for me. The museum has always been a place of comfort and familiarity which I think it might be different than it is for a lot of people. Well, let's, let's, let's share with our viewers your website because I want them to visit your website. It's, a, it's really a beautiful website, beautifully done. It's basically Kathleen Kolb, K-A-T-H-L-E-E-N-K-O-L-B.com. And I encourage my viewers to visit Kathleen's website. It's beautiful. Now, Kathleen, your work has been represented by New York Galleries. You've had over 40 solo shows and 90 group shows in New York and New England. 
Your work speaks for itself. It's beautiful and brilliant, but your success is one that many artists aspire to achieve. At what point in your life did you realize that you were a nationally acclaimed artist? Well, I, I, I still wouldn't call myself that, but I guess, you know, this is really funny when you think about it, because Vermont is a small pond, but, um, and that's one of the great things about it for people who, for all of us, really, because we have access to each other. Um, so uh, it was definitely a turning point for me when I was in my mid, mid 30s, early 30s, and uh, Vermont Life wanted to do a piece. So Tom Slayton came to my house. We gave him lunch. He came with the then art director, Mason Singer of Laughing Bear Associates. Um, we were all a great deal younger then, but um, you know that felt to me like a giant leap into the into celebrity. But you know, Vermont Life Magazine is not exactly international acclaim. But that was certainly a moment for me of feeling like I had I had some exposure that gave me a bigger audience, and I really appreciated that. Well, except I, I've interviewed artists who say, "Oh well." You know, my work will never be and, and accomplished artists like, well, my work will never be exhibited in New York. And and there's this sort of sadness that they just didn't quite. I know. I know. And, you know, and at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, but your work is, is great and it's brilliant. And you made a career out of it. You but, did. You did break into the New York. Um, yeah. Um, how did that happen? How did that happen? I guess I, I guess I had um, some ambition. You know, I think it takes a lot of drive uh, and and luck and and then luck with timing. So I started sending, I had, who did, who helped me with this? Giovanna Peebles introduced me to uh, the guy who does all the photographs and I'm hated that I can't come up with his name right now, but- Peter Miller or- No, the Weimaraner ones, the, the dog <sighs> photos, you know who I mean. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but anyway, he and his wife were connected in New York, and they gave me a short list of galleries that were interested Hunak. in is realism. Hunak? Is it Hunak? No, no, no. He, those are paintings. These are photographs. They okay, photographs. Um, and I, this is horrible that I'm stumbling with this. If I'd okay. known the question, I would have researched my answers. Okay. But anyway, um, they gave me a short list of galleries in New York that were interested in realism. And believe me, it is a short list. So I just started sending, um, you know, exhibition announcements and photographs of my work to those galleries, thinking, well, it doesn't hurt to have them, you know, see my name and say, where have I seen that name? Because it came in their mailbox. I mean, that's not possible anymore to do that. Everything happens electronically and everything's screened and you can't submit. So one of those galleries was Sherry French Gallery on 57th Street. Um, not a top tier realist gallery, but um, a good gallery. And that was my start. I stayed with her for seven years. And from there, I moved over to um, David Findlay Galleries with the help of Lee Potter Findlay. Um, at the time, the gallery was being operated by her younger brother, uh, Michael Findlay, who, who now lives in Middlebury. I mean, it all comes, you know, it all goes around, as you know. Oh, it's a circle. So, um, so I stayed with him until um, the gallery closed uh, a year or two after the Great Recession began. So I had about 14 years in New York. Well, that's extraordinary. And you know what? You're not giving credit to your work. So um, I just want to give credit to your work. That's what oftentimes gets you to that level is the, is the extraordinary work that you do. Now, in 2015, you were invited to be a fellow at the Ball and Glen Arts Foundation in Bally Castle. Ireland, share with us your love of Ireland because a lot of your work is focused on that on that country. Um, yeah, yeah, that was that was just that was an adventure. Um, it was a uh, a residency fellowship that I learned about from another artist. Uh, apply, you know, that application process and recommendations, and you know how those things go. And I was fortunate to be um, invited to spend five weeks there. And it's a it's a small situation. It's very rural. It's it's very Irish, but in many ways it's not that different from rural Vermont, except that the ocean is just, you know, half a mile's walk away. That part is pretty phenomenal. And the weather is quite different. But anyway, I had a great uh, five weeks in residence there and another week or so traveling around. I, I don't know what my romance with Ireland I'm 
really is founded on. I certainly have Irish ancestry. Um, I just have a romantic attachment to Ireland. That's we have a section on your website, uh, by the way, folks, Kathleen Kolb. Dot com. You have a you you click on you know, and and it comes down like six different items, including watercolors, and one of them is Ireland, and all of your paintings from Ireland are there. So that's why I focused on that. Well, yeah. let, let's talk a little bit about the art of action because I was involved in that as a board member of the Vermont Arts Council. That was kind of a that was kind of a big deal uh, back when we did it, and you were part of ten artists that were selected from over three hundred applicants. Tell us about that experience. Uh, that was great. It was crazy in a lot of ways. It was really uh, crazily structured, but it was um, it was an inspiration between the Vermont Arts Council and uh, Lyman Orton and his partner Janice Itzy, mm -hmm. and they funded this amazing program to create art by Vermont artists in a certain time frame about the future of Vermont. Um, being a realist, I remember telling the panel that I, I couldn't really paint the future because I, I paint what I see in the future. It's not invisible to me any more than it is to the rest of us, but that I would look for the cutting edge of the chosen subject area I had, which was um, the working forest. So I, I really enjoyed doing that. It was really exciting to go and find the loggers and foresters um, who were doing responsible logging and follow them around and photograph them and bring those photos back to the studio, make the work, try to do it in this absurd time frame, And then, you know, the, the whole thing had its, its own mechanism for, for being uh, resolved. But it was, a, it was a great experience. The other artists were wonderful. But the experience of being with, and of having an excuse to go and spend time with these workers and, um, and feel that that was valid, that, that I wasn't begging a favor of them just for myself. It was for, for the state. Right. It was fabulous. It was amazing. And I know that one of your paintings hangs at Main Street Landing. Now, you've been showing your work since the early 1980s. How has the art world and the business of art changed for you over the years? I think the business, the, the business of art has changed a lot over the years. And a lot of that's the way the digital era has changed everything. You know, uh, I mean, the fact that we're doing this, that I'm gonna be able to screen share images, um, that just didn't, wasn't the case. I mean, it used to be you took slides and sent slides to places. It was a very cumbersome process. And of course, it's much bigger. It's so much like everything. It's so much more competitive now because there's so many more people competing for the same amount of exposure and acclaim. I mean, I watch the younger people who I meet on residency, uh, for instance, at the Vermont Studio Center, and they're ambitious, they're hardworking, they really wanna do something different. And it's really hard to get attention because there are so many people clamoring for it and so few places that can really provide uh, that exposure. And so it, I think it's changed a lot. Now, in the meantime, I've had a daughter who, I have a daughter um, who has become an art dealer and an international art dealer. So I see a, another view of it that does keep me humble, Melinda, because you know she's dealing with the celebrity artists that you hear about or read about and, uh, and the art, international art fairs and all of that stuff. So I'm very mindful that, that there's, there's a lot more going on up there than, than what I see right here in Vermont. Good for her, what is her name? Her name is Anna Fisher Brodsky. Her work name is Anna Fisher. Anna Fisher. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations to your daughter. That must be so much fun that she's sort of fallen into the into the art world. Um, so also you did work in dance, film, and television. I saw that on your website. Now tell us a little bit about that work that you've done. Well, those are, you know, those are projects that come up. So dance was, a, dance was an invitation from a dear friend who I taught with at the Governor's Institute on the Arts for many years, still a dear friend, Peggy Pelliquin, who, um, fabulous modern dancer, worked with some great companies, um, David Dorfman it's included. And 
she made a, she's made a number of pieces. She went on to do choreography and teaching and other things as dancers have to do. Um, but she, one of the pieces that she choreographed, she wanted some, some visuals and she had a videographer involved and she wanted some images. And so we worked together and I gave her some images and they worked into her show. So that was a dance. Um, film was a different thing. I, the gallery I was working with in Vermont at the time in Stowe, Clark Galleries, um, developed a relationship with a production company that was doing the film, What Lies Beneath. I think, who was that? Harrison Ford and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, I think. And there was an artist character. The set designers needed stuff. So he contracted with them and basically rented them the entire contents of my studio. I mean, I basically, it all went. The, the, everything went to LA. A, a truck came and they took the couch, they took the easels, they took the books, they took the palettes, the brushes, the paint, the, everything came back with little little labels on it like this that said cold. I mean, this is a, this is a tin can. They took that to LA. So that was fun. Um, there was some money in that for, for me and I was great, very grateful for that. That came, uh, I think, right before the recession. So, it, you know, that's just projects, TV, so I'm trying to remember what the- Well, your work has expanded into so many areas. Um, now you have a list of works as noted in your bibliography on KathleenKolb.com. And I encourage my viewers to please visit Kathleen's website. Your work is broad, deep, and extensive. You have your work in so many selected collections around the country. You are an internationally recognized artist. I would like to share some of your work with our viewers. Uh, we're halfway through our show. Well, actually, we only have 11 minutes left. So, but, but I really want my viewers to see your work. And I was wondering if you'd be willing to share some of your images and talk about them. I would love to. So I'm going to try this. We'll see if it works. You tell me if this is effective. Right, thank you. What have we got? Thank you, Kathleen. You bet. So this is a this is a recent. I'm showing you recent work because um, I have a show up now at um, Edgewater Gallery in Middlebury, Vermont, and uh, the work. Some of the work is a little different, and some is the same. This is a watercolor, and we're not my, we're not seeing it. So you're not seeing it. Oh wait, share screen. How about that? How about that? Let's see how this works. How's that? There you go. You okay. started sharing your screen. There it is. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm, I'm glad you alerted me to the fact that it wasn't working. I hope it looks good. It looks beautiful. Um, this is a painting um, from a photo taken in Scotland of a, a dear friend and I went over. Um, let's see if we can move to the next one. This is a recent watercolor of a farm. And this is more my traditional subject matter. Um, so there's a couple pieces in the show that follow traditional subject matter, which like how, do, how do you do how do you do the detail you do in watercolor because watercolor is not easy to it's not an easy medium and then to be able to do the kind of detail you do well let's keep moving through your but i just want my viewers to understand that kathleen painted this with um you know with a in watercolor right uh well let's see if i can figure this out i've got I'm having a little trouble with my my application here um yeah, I painted that in watercolor, and uh, it's just what I do. I'm a I'm a Amazing. kind of a nutcase for having so having it. Uh, so let's. I'm I'm sorry. Just let me go see if I can figure out how to get this screen back on my screen so I know what I'm looking at. Well, if you just hit, it. yeah, I can tell you too what you're looking at, but um, it's it's uh, minimized at the moment, and I can't figure out how to get it. Uh, back up to where I can see it all. Well, let's, 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 um, let us um, go back to our interview and I'm gonna send people to uh, the Edgewater uh, site, okay? Cause um, we've got, we only have eight minutes left. There we go. I'm gonna whiz through some okay, images through these, okay, just you. to give you a, a taste. So oh. these are more, these are more recent. This, there's a few pieces here that have to do a little bit with the pandemic. You can't see the far shore. You're in a beautiful place, but there's, it's isolating. I also love to paint pictures of the night. Um, 
this painting is of an elderly housing um, building in the tiny town I live in, Lincoln. So it, the painting's titled Elders. And, you know, it's, it's meaningful to me as I think about our community. Again, this has to do a little bit with the pandemic because of the isolation we're all experiencing. This is a, a dear friend with her dog. We were out for a walk. Um, another place that I dearly love, this was a farm that belonged to um, another very close friend up in the Northeast Kingdom. I, I, these are all meaningful for me. As I look at them, it's actually good for me to realize this. This is another very dear friend in the doorway of his barn in Lincoln on a very cold early March evening, lots of snow, same barn from a different view. And again, back to that, how are we gonna get out of this pandemic? What do we see in the future here? What's gonna happen? And yet we live in a beautiful world and we are the lucky ones to be able to be here in Vermont through this experience. Are these good, Melinda? Is this working oh, for oh, you? These are amazing. And talk about, you You want, you talk about your ability to capture light. You're a realist painter and you have this ability to capture light, which is extraordinary. And you, you actually highlight that when you talk about your work. Well, it means a lot to me. And, and but my ended. So here's here's light that's that's crept away from the world. This lone person doing her evening walk um, up a hillside, but the daylight is gone. In this one, the light, the daylight is only barely lingering in the sky and on the top of Mount Abraham, but the light originates in the barn. So it's I've I've taken up an interest in very different qualities of light. Now this is an older painting that came out of an estate recently. And this is also part of the show. And I'm kind of excited that there are four, no, five or six paintings at the gallery that um, are not recent because they come from a period when I was also doing some amazing work. This was sold in New York and never shown in Vermont before. So it's a unique opportunity to see it. It's a three by four foot painting. And here you see the very direct sunlight on the snow and on the corner of the building. Uh, the, the title of the piece is Column of Light for obvious reasons. You see that the light has created this version of a column in the architecture. So then this again is one of the older pieces, a view from the top of Snake Mountain. So re reflected light on all those little chunks of water out in the view and on the rocks. Here again, the reflected light in the, or the remaining light in the sky. I mean, you know that's being lit from beyond the horizon as the earth turns away from the sun, but there's a little glimmer of it on that river in the foreground as well. And then at the other end of the day, the dawn light coming up and um, lifting the mist off the lake. So there's, all, there's many versions of light that I'm attracted to and drawn to and they're all here. This particular painting is a favorite of mine. It's of my son, Nathan, who is um, who has autism and is a wonderful human being and who loves the water. So this is him going into the lake, uh, a lake at, in Greensboro one misty morning. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll stop there because I like that picture. That's beautiful. Well, you know, I have a grandson with autism, Rowan Wild Riggs, right? Yeah, I know. I love seeing your posts about him. Uh, we, we should get together sometime and talk about our our, yeah. our beloved, you know, the, these, young, men. these um, men. All right. So we're going to unshare your your screen there. Perfect. Um, well, we're coming down to the end of the show. We have four minutes left. Okay. Um, I could talk to you for uh, days. Um, and Mitt, that's mutual. <laughs> Well, that's why we need to get together. And you're 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 down in Middlebridge. Let's talk about let's talk about the show you have right now called Fragile and Familiar. Those are some of the images that you showed there at the Edgewater Gallery on the Green in Montpelier. It runs through November eighth. Tell us about this exhibit. And to my viewers, I encourage you to go on down to Middlebury and see this exhibit at the Edgewater Gallery on the Green in Montpelier. Thank you, Melinda. I really appreciate that because you do a lot when you're an artist. You do a lot of work in isolation because you have something that is compelling to you. You know, 
it's so compelling that you have to make it. And the making of it might take weeks or months. So it really has to be meaningful to you to do it or you wouldn't stick with it. So when you go to see a show, bear in mind that it represents um, years out of an artist's life, generally speaking. Um, certainly the case for me in this, in this show because the, the, I started the work uh, probably in 2020 and worked worked on it, got a new knee in the interim, which took a little time, but um, went back to work on it this spring and finished the work, delivered it in September. And now it's on the wall for a brief month. So I want as many people as possible to enjoy it, to well, go and enjoy it. Well, we're gonna have to do that. Now, listen, Kathleen, what's next for you? What are you working on now? And what's what's next for you? What's next is moving the compost, Melinda. <laughs> All the things I didn't do while preparing for this show. <laughs> Cleaning out the garden, moving the compost, getting bringing the firewood onto the porch. Getting, but getting I do have several commissions lined up, and there's a number of pieces that I really wanted to do for this show and didn't have time for, and they're stuck in here and desperate to get out. So oh, I can't wait. There's, there's some more some more things coming in line with what I was making. Some more obscure shore pictures and and more and a lot more nighttime pictures i have got i've got so much in my mind to do oh that it gets well, me thank going. Heavens, we, we are the recipients of your of what's in your mind so tell us very quickly we have a couple minutes left what are your words of wisdom for young artists today who want to create a career as an artist uh to remember that as an artist your basic mission is to tell the truth um you know you may you may lust after fame and fortune uh, but if, if you don't tell the truth, you're not going to get there. The rest of it is, you know, luck and timing and ambition. Um, but you, you need to just stay true to yourself and, and make the things that matter most. That's beautiful. But it also is a gift. And as great musicians, great artists, great writers, there's a gift that comes with that. And Kathleen Kolb, you've got that gift. And you shared it with us and you've shared it with the world. And, and I'm so glad that you're here in Vermont and that we can see you and see your work locally. Um, and I want to thank you. I'm going to go to the, the view so everybody can see both of us together here. I want to I thank you for your time and for sharing this with my viewers. And uh, to my viewers, please visit Kathleen's website, Kathleen Kolb dot com and and uh and and check it out um so to you my friends let's get together down the road and i wish you all the best in a beautiful winter capturing the light and the beauty that you capture and thank you for your time kathleen i really appreciate it thank you so much melinda it's been an honor and to my viewers thank you for tuning in and i will see you again really soon bye-bye <laughs>